So now listen here. So what is now remaining is gastrointestinal disturbances. This is also an important kind of lifestyle disease because because of the modern lifestyle many people are having this kind of problem either problem with your intestine or problem with your stomach some people will have constipation some have gas trouble so different types of disorders affecting your intestine or stomach is affecting many people and it makes their life also most of the time very difficult also so gastrointestinal diseases are those that affect any section of the gastrointestinal tract. Gastrointestinal tract means it begins from mouth, goes to esophagus, then comes stomach, then comes intestine and finally the rectum. So these are the different regions of the gastrointestinal tract. So any disorder that is affecting any of these organs is known as a gastrointestinal disorder. And the term encompasses or includes acute, chronic. Acute means very severe. Chronic means remaining for a long time. That is the meaning of the word chronic. Recurrent means repeating. Functional disorder and covers a wide range of diseases including inflammatory bowel, the bowel disease and functional dyspepsia. We will come to that. So first type of disorder that is affecting uh, stomach is known as a diarrhea. You know what is a diarrhea? It's, there is a definition is also here. It simply means frequent loose watery stools which are usually accompanied by urgent need to go to toilet. That is the definition. Now any diarrhea is usually uh, if, uh, uh, shown by abdominal pain or cramping. Cramping means muscular contraction of your abdominal muscle that is a cramping and there will be sometimes vomiting or a sensation of vomiting called nausea. So there are different reasons for diarrhea and most of the time diarrhea is caused by some kind of virus particularly that virus which are normally causing are norovirus which are a common cause of diarrhea and, uh, and, uh, especially, and vomiting outbreaks on cruise ship. That is uh, the passenger ships. So virus is the primary. That is why when you are taking some kind of uh, uh, spoiled food from a hotel, it causes you a certain diarrhea. Then other common causes include bacteria such as Salmonella, Campylobacter, Escherichia, Escherichia coli, Giardia. And these are some other kinds of bacteria responsible for the diarrhea. So one is a viral disease, viral diarrhea, others are bacterial diarrhea caused by Salmonella, Campylobacter and Escherichia coli, Giardia. Then and there are some other type of diseases called celiac disease or Crohn's disease about which we will come to later. Then uh, the intolerance to certain, for example, for some people when they take special kinds of food that will result in diarrhea. For some people taking some kind of medication will, will result in diarrhea. So that kind of allergic reactions will be there. So these are the different causes of diarrhea. And normally for diarrhea we are giving anti-diarrhea medication. And most of the anti-diarrhea medication will be containing these two chemicals. Either is loperamide. Loperamide is a common type of anti-diarrheal medication. Other is diphenox diphenoxylate. The, the purpose is that they will be slowing down the bowel movements. Bowel movements means the food first reaches the stomach. From the stomach it goes to intestine. From the intestine it goes to so large intestine. Then it goes to rectum. So there is a normally a, there is a speed at which food is passing from one organ to another organ. What these medications are doing is that they will be reducing the speed of this transfer. That is why they are slowing down the movements of the intestine and stomach. So that there will not be uh, more loss of, uh, 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 more loss of uh, excretory material, uh, matter from the uh, rectum. That is the purpose by which it is, uh, the method by which it is acting. 
then elect another method that we are using for diarrhea is electrolyte solution you have heard about ors oral rehydration thera of solution for example you take one glass of water you add two tablespoon of sugar and a small little of uh, salt also to you will be you are adding to that that will give you plenty of sodium and also glucose so the loss of glucose and sodium are one of the important reason for the uh, Uh, difficulty that people are experiencing during the diarrhea so that is a simple household solution uh, and that we are you normally practicing then other medications are also used like antibiotics so if the diarrhea is very severe doctor may prescribe you some kind of antibiotics because the purpose of antibiotics is to destroy this kind of bacteria so if it is cause for example when you are taking a spoiled food sometimes if you are taking a food from some hotel some people will be having diarrhea most of the time it may be caused because of some kind of bacteria then another type of disease is known as a, so diarrhea is one important type of disease uh, coming under the uh, gastrointestinal disorder then next one is a crohn's disease crohn's uh, disease here the chronic bowel disease that causes patches of inflammation you can see patches of inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract anywhere between mouth and the anus here you can see that so this is how the normal intestine is appearing now when there is a crohn's disease the intestine will be looking like that there will be inflammation inside the intestine and that inflammation is responsible for this kind of disease known by the name crohn's disease and see here you can see that The, the 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 in the the in, in on the inner wall of the intestine some kind of swelling or inflammation will be there and that is the most important symptom of the crohn's disease so there will be inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract between mouth or anus in any part either in can take place inside the stomach or in the uh, intestine or in the large intestine or in the rectum in any part of the gastrointestine it can happen we don't know the exact reason why it is happening our people who are consuming more westernized or it is more common in westernized countries you know because of the western diet and also common in families for example if parents are having children usually having this problem and diet and stress there are two important reasons uh, which are which are aggravating aggravating means increasing the severity of this disease so these are the two important reasons and symptoms may include diarrhea so some people will be having frequent diarrhea and sometimes the doctors will say it may be due to crohn's disease so even if they are not taking any spoiled food they are taking only healthy food still these people will be having diarrhea after taking food they will have they have they they, they need to go to toilet immediately so most of the time crohn's disease may be responsible and this crohn's disease is also genetically uh, transmitted so symptoms include diarrhea that persists for several weeks so that is one then there will be abdominal pain and also weight loss weight loss comes because the food is not properly absorbed around 50% of the people with the crohn's disease notice blood or mucus in their fecus and some may report urgent need to move, move their bowel or sensation of incomplete evacuation so these are some of the symptoms of the crohn's disease now most of the time treatment include aminosalicylate corticosteroids immunomodulators or other type of biologics and uh, so exactly the, the doctors also don't know why this crohn's disease is developing why there is this kind of inflammation inside the inner wall of the stomach or intestine so this kind of uh, this kind of inflammation or swelling is the primary reason for diarrhea caused by crohn's disease so this is another type of uh, diarrhea known as crohn's disease then there is another disease known as celiac disease in the case of celiac disease this is an autoimmune disorder what is an autoimmune disorder our immune system is attacking our own body cell or and destroying our own body cell it is known as an autoimmune disorder so any kind of disorder that is attacking our own body cell is known as a, a, a celiac disease 
so it is a auto immune disorder the small intestine is hypersensitive to gluten gluten is a, a, a substance present in wheat so those people who are taking wheat they will be having frequent irritation of their stomach keep quiet i will keep quiet so uh, ingestion of gluten goes immune system of the body to attack small intestine leading to damage to the villi of the small intestine so this is how the see this is how the uh, normal villi so for example if you take the small intestine on the inner wall of the small intestine you can find this kind of finger like structures we call it by the name villi villi is the name given to that and because of the uh, celiac disease this villi will be destroyed and the, and the small, inner side of the small intestine will be appearing like that so what happens is that food cannot be properly absorbed and that will also result in some kind of uh, abdominal disturbance so celiac disease can start at any age and symptoms include bloating bloating means just like the gas then changes in bowel habit then rashes may appear and because of in, uh, inadequate absorption of the food there will be weight loss then poor growth rate in children so the main problem with the celiac disease is that and the, the some people may not be able to digest the gluten properly so if they are taking gluten rich food most of the time wheat will be containing gluten so currently only treatment for celiac disease is lifelong adherence like from uh, uh, then to strict gluten free diet that is taking food only that does not containing gluten in that so wheat normally contains gluten so avoiding such kind of food is the only method of treatment that is presently available for celiac disease so celiac disease is also another kind of gastrointestinal disorder then uh, we come to another disease called for the name diverticular disease now in the use of this disease chronic this is a chronic condition condition means chronic means persisting for several years so it is a kind of disorder that is that affects for long that continues for long uh, long years in which small in small pockets of out out pouchings called diverticula occur in the bowel here i will show you that see this is the normal way and from your large intestine or small intestine these kind of pouches will develop so this is how see here you can see that normally the intestine will look like this so this kind of small balloon like pouches will develop and they are known as diverticula and and, and that and, and sometimes food material some uh, may get trapped inside this uh, diverticula and there will be bacterial contamination bacterial uh, infl uh, uh, the, uh, bacterial attack will be there so this is how the diverticula is becoming a problem so diverticula can become inflamed when undigested food get trapped within them causing pain constipation and sometimes fever nausea or cramping this condition is called as diverticulitis diverticulitis so diverticula means simply some kind of out out pouching from the intestine so when food material are trapped inside there will be bacterial attack and that will be causing pain and other and muscular cramping it affects half of the people above the age of 60 that is after an age of 60 many people almost 50% of the people are having this kind of problem so as we are getting older we are getting uh, we, are, we are getting affected by more number of diseases a low fiber diet is thought to be the main cause so here also you can see that the primary reason is consuming more amount of uh, food which are containing less amount of fiber because uh, normally if you are taking plenty of fruits uh, vegetables they are rich in fiber but if you are in the habit of taking only fish egg meat only they do not contain sufficient amount of fiber in that so taking enough amount of fiber rich food so taking enough amount of fiber rich food is the only way to reduce this kind of disease then many people don't have symptoms 
So, and the condition is often discovered during a colonoscopy. Colonoscopy means you know what is endoscopy. Doctor will be uh, putting a tube into your mouth and that at the end of the tube there will be a camera and doctor can see in a TV screen or in a computer screen uh, what is present inside, uh, what are the situa what is the situation inside your intestinal tube. So, that is known as a uh, the endoscopy. So, where the tube is inserted through the mouth. An opposite technique is known as a colonoscopy. Instead of inserting the tube through mouth, they will insert through your anus into the rectum and, and also into the large intestine. So, if there is some kind of problem in the large intestine or rectum, doctors can see the inner surface of the large intestine and the rectum. So, that is the technique is known as a colonoscopy. And sometimes if there is some kind of cancer, uh, 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 that, that uh, uh, the also this kind, of, uh, this kind of methods are used. So, problem with the diverticular disease is that there won't be any symptom. It is due to the lack of symptoms that this disease is normally undetected. And only way to cure this disease is having a high fiber rich food. That is why people are always saying, Consume more amount of vegetables, more number of fried fruits. So, the taking enough amount of vegetables and fruits can reduce your chance of developing diverticular disease. Now, another disease is hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids also, you might have heard about this. This is another new, uh, new sense many people are having. And people cannot discuss these kind of things with anyone. There is another another problem. And commonly we call it as piles. Hem the common name for hemorrhoids is known as a piles. Here, hemorrhoids occur when anal cushions, which are small areas of the vein containing tissues that seal the anal opening, preventing the rain, become encorched and swollen. Here I will show you. See, this is how the these piles or hemorrhoids are developing. The normally, this is how the this is the how the outer uh, the external opening of the anus is there. Sometimes, what happens is that there will be this blood vessels or this kind of bulging of the blood vessels will be taking place inside your anus. So, what happens is that, and sometimes these bulged blood vessels will break or rupture and leaking blood into that. So, that is one problem of the hemorrhoids or piles. Here you can see that there is a small balloon like projection. Sometimes what, sometimes it may be present inside the your anus, then it won't be causing too much problem. Sometimes what happens is that it comes out through the anus to the outer, outer portion. Here you can see that. So, this is known as external hemorrhoids and this is known as internal hemorrhoids. So, this is a difficult condition affecting many people and, and people normally won't discuss this kind of difficulties with even close family relatives, but they will have to suffer. So, basically this is the problem of pipes or hemorrhoids. There will be this kind of bulgings. Bulgings are usually caused by now the swelling of the uh, blood vessels into the inner, inner cavity of the uh, anus. So, what happens here? So, what happens here is that in the use of hemorrhoids, we can find two types of hemorrhoids. One is external hemorrhoids, as I have told you, this is the external hemorrhoid. And other one is the internal hemorrhoid. So, in both cases, a small bunches of grapes or can be become very red, tender, or that is basically blood vessel rich area. Certain blood vessel rich area will be projecting into your anal cavity. That is what is happening in the use of external hemorrhoids or internal hemorrhoids. So, what, sometimes what happens is that they will rupture or break. So, releasing lot of uh, blood into the uh, blood during the uh, when you are going to the toilet. Occasionally, they may prolapse. Prolapse means pop. Here you can see that. This is the anal. So, uh, uh, this is the external hemorrhoid. Sometimes these internal hemorrhoids will come and, and move out of the out from the inside to the outside. That situation is known as a prolapse. So, these are the two difficult conditions which are affecting many people and they are known as a hemorrhoids. Another more difficult situation is there. 
that is known by the name anal fissure i will show you a picture then you will understand now the, the in the use of hemorrhoids their treatments are usually because of some suppository suppository means any kind of medical medicine that is kept inside the anus that is known as suppository sometimes there are uh, laser treatments are available sometimes surgery may be required so these are the only way you have to permanently cure the uh, you know what it will have hemorrhoids now another problem is that that is anal fissure this is a small tear in the thin tissue that lines here you can see this is the anal opening and what is seeing is that there is a small fissure there is a small injury and you can think about how much pain the people will be having so just like when you are having a fissure on your lips you may be feeling too much pain just like that there will be this kind of fissures on the anal lips on the inner on the outer lips of the anus that is known as anal lips so that will that is known as anal fissure and they are common in infants are there and by while passing large bowel that is if the bowel is not very soft move, moving passing it out may be causing intense problem and this kind of problem affects people who are who had a surgery one problem with the surgery is that most of the time when you are having a surgery they give you some kind of painkiller anesthetic the problem with this anesthetic is that most of the anesthetic was constipation so what happens immediately after the surgery is that people may be having very severe form of constipation and those people may sometimes experience this kind of anal fissure so anal fissure is also a problem and here also the reason is that people not taking enough amount of fiber rich food so taking not a uh, sufficient amount of fiber rich food is the main reason for that so best treatment is taking laxatives and also fiber rich diet then you can have uh, polyps and colorectal cancer this is also another type of problem polyps are growth that occur on the inner surface of the colon here you can see that see this is the polyp see this is the digestive tract see this kind of mushroom like structures will be developing inside and we call it by the name polyp this is colon polyp so this is known as a polyp so what uh, so these are the two types one type have high risk of turning into uh, the colorectal cancer sometimes what happens is that they will not develop into a cancer sometimes they turn into a cancer So if they are becoming a cancer, cancer they become very large, creating more trouble. So colorectal cancer is the third leading cause of cancer among American men and women. So this is you have to keep in mind that so it is an important cause of death for many people around the world. Colorectal cancer and most colorectal cancer grow slowly and cause few symptoms until they reach a large size. that is why many kind of abdominal cancers are detected at a later stage which is why colorectal cancer screening is so important because colorectal cancer is is more common in people aged 45 to 75 the treatment of colorectal cancer includes surgery chemotherapy or radiation therapy so this is the this is regarding polyp. so polyp is basically some kind of growth inside the anal cavity Uh, or or in the large intestine or in the rectum so the, here you can see that this is how the polyps are developing the problem is that sometimes they develop into a cancer then there is a ulcerative colitis uh, ulcerative colitis is the this is another kind of uh, problem affecting the people now what happens in ulcerative colitis is that Uh, the innermost lining of the colon uh, will be inflamed you know, inflamed or there will be swelling and as a result of swelling there will be diarrhea and frequent bowel movements is there so in the use of ulcerative colitis also these people will be suffering from frequent diarrhea so that is also a problem for many people for example Jap japan by prime minister there earlier there was a prime minister of japan not the present one he had this problem he resigned from this job because of this ulcerative colitis that was the reason he was sick because 
it may he it was very difficult for him in, in continue in public life so that's why he resigned from that so other type of the uh, symptoms are there there will be a rectal bleeding bloody stools and loss of appetite so these are some and here also we don't know the exact reason in some people genetics hereditary is a, it's a conservative be a reason so those people who are having this ulcerative colitis know how what are the difficulties of that problem then we have peptic ulcer disease peptic ulcer is a small holes that are of that that occur in the lining of your stomach or on the upper part of a small intestine in both cases they are causing either gastric ulcer or there are also duodenal ulcer and this is more common in men aged between 30 to 50 and gastric ulcers are also common among middle aged and elderly people and here the most important reason is the presence of bacteria known as helicobacter pylori so many times this helicobacter pylori is responsible for gastric ulcer or duodenal ulcer and the treatment method you normally use is aspirin yes ibuprofen or diclofenac these are some of the normal drugs that we are using so this is how they we are see here you can see this is how the peptic ulcer is developing here you can see there will be internal bleeding so there will be bleeding or there will be injury or hole in the inner wall of the stomach wall or intestinal wall so there will be abdominal pain will be there so these are some of the uh, so most of the time eradicating the helicobacteroidi pylori infection is the primary method of treatment so these are the different types of gastrointestinal disorder 